Good day, y'all. I thought my next video was going to be related to insects, but this one was prompted by a dream. And what was curious about the dream was it involved, towards the end, witches and a, hallucin a airborne hallucinogenic that was in their hut. There was like four or five of them. I was at the end of the dream. The prior aspect of the dream had taken place in a different location. And I wandered into this cabin hut and there's potions everywhere and there was these old ladies and they seemed to be melting as they were smiling at me with their near toothless grins and there was an airborne hallucinogenic that was present so then I wake up and I'm thinking about toxins poison poison toxins and I wasn't alarmed by the witches in the dream i remember i recall just looking at them i didn't even feel anything that they were doing i was like you're 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 a <laughs> your uh your hallucinogenic airborne hallucinogenic is doing nothing at all even though you're like smiling at me and being weird <laughs> and i do this word of the day thing for whatever reason it's just interesting and this toxin comes up today or sorry this was yesterday it's just weird i mean i think that's purely a coincidence but it shows that i need to dig into this more and then the first thing that came to mind for whatever reason was poison dart frogs so i uh looked into the, the looked at the first video i could find on poison dart frogs and this brave wilderness character comes up and i thought to myself hmm this person seems relatively familiar i've never watched a video on them but there's just something about that name and I'll get into that. But first, I want to show you the video where he talks about aposematism, which is the big aspect about these frogs. They're highly vibrant and colorful, which is reflective of their supposed, which is I'm going to get into, poison, uh, their, their capacity to be poisonous. And if you read about them, it talks about it has to do with their alkaloid diet. And if they don't have an alkaloid diet, they'll lose their toxicity. But I believe it's way less, uh, they're like, they're way less toxic than that. And even he uh, hints to that in this, in this, where basically you have to eat the, or put the frog in your mouth to feel any adverse effects. Just holding one is not going to do anything. So before getting into it, um, I'm going to show you this, this excerpt from this video. And I commented here, why, why does this guy throw devil horns twice when talking about, about a positive? Aposematism, which is just, a, again, like I said, a fancy word for vibrance reflects toxins. Growing up, uh, poison dart frogs, in my mind, were the, they were what we were taught. It was like one of the three trifectas of why to be afraid of the Amazon. Okay, one of them was the anaconda, anaconda. So it's a fake giant snake. They made a stupid movie about it, like Jaws. It was not nearly as successful as Jaws, but it's there. Um, and who cares? At, at the end of the day, they're all liar trainees. It doesn't matter. Um, it's just the matter. What matters is that you, you learn that this earth isn't as dangerous as they tell you. Um, and then the second one is piranhas, which better believe I'm looking into that after this. And then this was the other thing was, oh, if you know, if you're on land, there's these poisonous dart frogs. And if you happen to touch them, then you could go into like convulsions and hallucinations and it, it just i do not think they're nearly as toxic as it seems and i i believe that there's plenty of indications that this is the case so in this video i watched it it's about seven minutes long and at the 356 mark and the 409 mark respectively this guy throws horns and he's talking about this aposematism and their toxicity um also they this video is ridiculous it's just nat geo he, he pretends like there's a jump cut and he pretends that they spent all this time getting to this frog when i guarantee the indigenous people they know where they all are and it's just not they're not that hard to find and yeah i, I think that we're dealing with a bunch of liars that want you to hold them up and uh, revere them and they talk about themselves in the third person and it's just disgusting once you once you know how the orange baffo hive acts you know them all and um, without further ado, yeah, here we go. Also, his initials were in orange, which is baffle hive color. The see top, the, the top left corner here, brave wilderness. And uh, yeah, his whole thing is in orange. It's ridiculous. So he's basically like a younger David Attenborough type, 
goes into nature and tells, tells you bullshit. And obviously this isn't a, a, an animatronic. This isn't a fake animal, but it's important to know that what they're saying about it is highly exaggerated. So without further ado, let's get to the jump cut of the video. I went a few, a few seconds ahead of where I was, but like I said, 356 and 409 watch his hands. Here we go. Turn the volume up a bit. This little tiny frog. This has to be the most brightly colored frog I think I've ever come across. Being from Ohio, I'm used to catching green frogs and bullfrogs. They're brown and green. And you look at this environment, a rainforest, you think to yourself, how does this frog possibly camouflage itself? Well, it doesn't. It's actually doing exactly the opposite. This bright coloration is called aposematic coloration. It's actually a defense against predators because it warns them, if you eat me, I'm extremely toxic. Now, this specific species, the granulated poison frog, is not quite as toxic as some others. There are some species in South America that are so potent you could die within a matter of hours. Now okay, so potent you could die within a matter of hours. Maybe. Okay, this is what I. This is basically what I think about this at this point. Maybe these creatures are toxic to smaller creatures. That would make perfect sense to me. It's a. If you're. A mammal maybe a little monkey living in the amazon something along those lines and you come across this you probably shouldn't eat it it's probably going to give you a bad stomach ache it may, it may kill you but if you're a human being unless you're like a baby this thing's not going to affect you this is ridiculous and this is what they sold to us as a, as a child that this place was scary this amazon needs to be braved by people like this this person's a clown this person's you know what this whole thing is about you know what him putting up the horns really is Okay, this is the 33 Orange Club. This is this is guest speaker who talked about BW Brave Wilderness because she, like me, has been always fascinated by animals and knows a lot about them. And what this guy's doing by throwing horns at the throughout at the, the toxic elements here is, hey, other baffos that see my hand signs, you can go buy this thing and then tell your friends that they're so toxic and then throw the same gang sign that I am and laugh because, because they believe you. That's how this world works, okay? They want to make it seem all dangerous. They want to make it seem like they're experts and that you need them to get anywhere. And that, that's how they act. That's what the Masons do. So in this, she talks about uh, the their, their common signs and symbols. Um, in one of her videos, she mentions BW because it's a, it's a seven. You know, two, B is a two, uh, W is a five. And she talks about their usernames being CCs and MMs and WWs and they're right here at the bottom. Uh, really, the way the characters, the letters, numbers, or rotations, they'll utilize that. WWMMEE33 -E, all go together. But then I say, again, this guy's covered in orange. Orange is their biggest calling card and he's throwing horns. There's no doubt about it. So I went there first and then I went to Wikipedia and it doesn't take long. I thought the most damning a uh, little factoid about them is right down here at the bottom. They're called dendrobatids. Dendro meaning, of course, tree in dendrochronology. And they tend to live on or close to the ground, but also in trees as much as 33 feet from the ground. And this makes me makes me think. Uh, I don't know why I hadn't made this connection before, but the whole point, America is the shithole that it is and how we have the non-metric system and is because look at the conversion rate one meter is 3.3 feet you see how that works you see and then uh our freezing point is 32 degrees fahrenheit it's just their club is imbued in everything on purpose they want you to constantly be talking about it and not have any idea about it i had not made that connection before but yes of course the reason america has the it's numerical system it does is because it's a it directly links to their 33 club duh i don't know why i had never thought of that so yeah they're endemic to south america central america um they need moist wet habitats and then like i said if you get into this they need an alkaloid diet apparently to maintain their toxicity but i completely believe that their toxicity is never strong enough to harm a real a full full-grown human and i wish i wasn't lied to as a child being like, oh, avoid these frogs at all costs. And you'd see them in little exhibits at um, science centers and things like that or um, wildlife parks. And people would be like, oh, my God, like, it's so small. But, you know, be careful if you even, like, get a finger on it. You could be in the hospital and that kind of thing. 
and that's just how these people act they want to make you afraid of everything and this world just isn't nearly as scary as it um as they claim it to be so we'll read a little bit about this here the chemicals secreted by dendrobatid family of frogs or alkaloids that differ in chemical structure and toxicity many poison dart frogs secrete lip lipophilic acid alkaloid toxins such as allopumilotoxin batrachotoxin a P oh, so they have many different toxins and this is they're often sourced uh, by people for you know all sorts of things <laughs> Um, alkaloids in the skin glands and poison dart frogs serve as a chemical defense against predation. I think that's true. I believe that smaller animals, if they predate on them, probably aren't in the great, great state. Similar to like a puffer fish or any, you know, small animal that has a pretty powerful mechanism that renders consumption of them to be uh, fruitless, if you will. And they are therefore able to be active alongside potential predators during the day. 28 structural classes of alkaloids are known in poison dart frogs. And then we'll get into this guy too. Uh, the most toxic of poison dart frogs is the Phyllobates terribilis, which reminds me of dinosaur, like terrible lizard terribilis. Like, are you kidding me? They just, they're just a bunch of jokers. Um, it is believed that po dart frogs do not synthesize their poisons, but sequester the chemicals from arthropod prey items, such as ants. So they need to consume a specific diet that's high in alkaloids to make their poison it's pretty interesting <laughs> because of this captive bred animals do not possess significant levels of toxins and this is what's important this was not expressed to me like i i didn't maybe like okay go look at the article is is the answer like research it yourself or not research is a world that word i hate uh, go study it yourself <laughs> um because of this Captive bred animals do not possess significant levels of toxins as they are read on diets that do not contain the alkaloids sequestered by wild populations. So even if you have that bullshitting mason friend, you can just go on the Wikipedia and it'll tell you that, oh, they're, they're lying because they're not on the alkaloid pop diet that they would be on in nature. Nonetheless, the captive frogs retain the ability to accumulate alkaloids when they are once again provided an alkaloidal diet. Despite the toxins used by some poison dart frogs, some predators have developed the ability to withstand them. And I'm going to say here, they, this is some karmic bullshit. This is them basically leaving this open so that they don't they don't have the hell to pay for expressing so heavily in the childlike programming that, and even like the the introductory adult, I'm sure people that aren't interested in just you know, oh, this is a thing that's a you know vibrant frog. Oh, it's so toxic, and if you touch it, that's what I was told. That's messed up, and it's just not true. Um, some predators have developed the ability to withstand them. Apparently, a snake has. So let's keep going. Yeah, poison is used to make a painkiller. So yeah, it has that kind of that inverse effect. Um, what did I want to rest, uh, acknowledge here? Let's see. Um, developed immunity to the poison. Um, they may have medicinal value. It's apparently one, one of their chemicals is more potent than morphine, um, but the therapeutic dose is close to a fatal dose. So maybe there are toxins in these in these guys that are poisonous, but I believe it's a, they're so small and you basically would have to put them in your mouth and consume them. And even then it probably wouldn't, it wouldn't, it, it'd have to have the alkaloid diet. And it, again, I, I, I think they, they vastly overstate it. And I think devil horns and what I'm going to get into more is, is just evident that this is not, nearly as toxic an animal as it's been expressed in common culture or just common uh like commoner like oh this is something that's introduced to me and i read i read the blurb on its um you know glass enclosure because when you go to the reptile house oh they have some poison dart frogs and then it'll have a blurb and the blurb is going to be misleading and it'll have coating in it or whatever orange um so they basically drop this due to gastrointestinal side effects. Uh, the most poisonous, like I said, the Phallobates terribilis, enough toxin on average to kill 10 or 20 men. Uh, I just, I don't think so. I could be wrong. I just, the things I'm seeing with the devil horns and all the coating doesn't make sense to me. Um, and then they, they kind of give away their bullshit later on too. So this is, this is another aspect of it because this whole video was essentially and one of their, their their main characteristics is this aposematism this bright coloration reflective of their high toxicity so read this read this aspect on conspicuousness and see how this does not align 
Conspicuous coloration in these frogs is further associated with diet specialization, body mass, aerobic ability, capacity, sorry, and chemical defense. Conspicuousness and toxicity may be inversely related, as polymorphic poison dart frogs that are less conspicuous are more toxic than the brightest and most conspicuous species. How does that make sense? You would think the most bright ones would be the most toxic based on aposomatism. The brightest ones are going to be the most toxic, but it's saying no. Some of the ones that are less conspicuous are the more toxic ones. And here like, it goes on to explain their bullshit that they, they tell us. <laughs> Energetic costs of producing toxins and bright color pigments lead to potential trade-offs between toxicity and bright coloration. So the energetic cost of making that coloration uh, takes away from the toxicity. It, it, fine, maybe that is a true science, but that is not how it was expressed. The aposematism is completely what they run with. That because they're so vibrant, that's how you know they're toxic. They're more vibrant than any frog you've ever seen. And it's insane. So therefore, prey populations that are more toxic are predicted to manifest less bright signals, opposing the classical view that increased conspicuousness always evolves with increased toxicity. Okay, well then why don't you tell people that at the standard place we, you go? Because they want you to be afraid of everything. They want you to think this whole world is scary. They want you to never go to the Amazon because, oh well, I'm not prepared. I could never, you know, brave the wa brave those rivers with anacondas. And what was the, the other thing that they used to talk? Maybe this is genuine. I don't know. I have to research this too or study this. Um, is when you urinate, apparently in the Amazon, there's a fish that will go up through urethra and lay eggs inside of you. It just, it's drawn to your urine, uses that urine as a pathway and goes up. I don't know if that's even true. That could be more horror nonsense from the club. And I, it's just devil horns and that's what they do. And it's really stupid, but I, you know, I, no one's made a video on poison dart frogs being fake or not being fake. They're real animals, but not having the, the, toxicity that's bandied about and clearly not related to they even they cover their ass constantly here the aposematism is constantly referenced in these things whenever you are around whenever you're at an exhibit and it's just they're saying all oh, it basically doesn't have a, it, it's the opposite the ones that happen to be poison dart frogs but aren't as colorful are the ones you got to watch out for it's just it's bullshit okay yeah here uh so then it kind of, they, they dart around with this and it, it's, it just doesn't seem like science anymore. So most species of dart, poison dart frogs are small, some less than 1.5 centimeters. So they're very tiny. Most poison dart frogs are brightly colored, displaying aposematic patterns to warn potential predators. Their bright coloration is associated with their toxicity and levels of alkaloids. So it just, it gets to this point where you're like, what is it? Okay. There's, okay. So there's, like a, I guess you can have like, a, what is it? A, a gross alkaloid level right so the, the the frog cannot decide how there's no way oh i want to i want to make myself more colorful and use my alkaloids towards no they just they are what they are they eat what they eat or how toxic they are it has it's just it doesn't make sense okay their bright coloration is associated with their toxicity and levels of alkaloids for example frogs of the genus dendrobiotes have high levels of alkaloids whereas cholestasis are cryptically colored and are not toxic okay so they're both apparently dart frogs poison dart frogs but this what, what you're saying here about the more cryptic about the more cryptically colored ones being more poisonous does not echo here with the cholestasis so is it within the dendrobiotes that this alkaloid level relating to their skin cone and it being used on their skin color as opposed to their toxins is that what you're is that what you're emphasizing is it specifically the dendrobiotes i don't know here above us we have a ranidomea as as amazonica there's a, quite a few of these um out there and i'm simply arguing that their toxin level isn't such that you should be worried about them so <laughs> Poison dart frogs are an example of aposematic organism. Um, their bright coloration advertises unpalatability. Of course, this is all they say over and over again. Um, it's currently thought to have originated in at least four at least four times within the poison dart family, according to phylogenetic trees. And dendrobatid frogs have since undergone dramatic divergences, both interspecific and anthrospecific, in their aposematic coloration. 
This is surprising given the frequency dependent nature of this type of defense mechanism. Okay. Um, so then, yeah, ph uh, Philobites terribilis. Talked about the conspicuousness. Okay. And then the mating behavior. Uh, here, this is, this is pretty funny. Observations of the Dendrobatidae family suggest that males of the species would typically make their mating call in the morning between the times of 6.30 morning and 11.30. This may be accurate. I just find it interesting that it's 11.30, which is clear 33. Like, of course, it's 11.30. So it's another 33 there in the article. Calling would typically come from a place of elevation from various pieces of nature. It's really poorly written. The males would usually be on average one meter above the ground on limbs, trunks, and stems, or logs of trees so that the voice traveled farther, as well as the fact that it would help them be seen. The calls were signaled towards the stream as the females typically were in the area. Um, and then it's, this is similar to um, mosquitoes in that there's not that many males. And as we're finding, humans are people. There's not that many regular males. It's all females out here. Um, there's, of course, swires, but, you know, many of them are born with vaginas and other ones just pretend. So there's not really that many males. And the females actually fight among, fight for each other. The females, if you go to the bottom here, stroked on, climbed on, and jumped on the other in tactile courtship and were by far the more active. So they're fighting for males. It's, it's the opposite of what um, traditional courtship is seen. But actually... <laughs> If you if you go baffle training hives through and through to our culture, um, who are the quarters? It's the free martins trying to court the swires. So it's kind of similar and it's a backwards world. <laughs> so post mating behavior this is goes into what I was talking about. Um, Male sex has a much smaller portion. It's been studied that in the family of Dentro Day, many of the species exhibit sex role reversal, in which the females are competing for a limited number of males, and the males are the choosers, and their parental investment is much larger than the females. This theory also says that the female, well, again, it's a theory, the female will typically produce eggs at an exceedingly fast rate that the males cannot possibly take full care of them, which then leads to some of the males becoming unreceptive. Dendro Batty Day also exhibit the parental quality hypothesis. This is where the females mating with the males try to ensure that the male mates with as few individuals as possible. So they're like running, they're fighting and others off so that their number of offspring is limited. And thus, each individual offspring receives a larger portion of care, attention, and resources. This is common. You hear about gerbils, they eat their own young often, like the, like the last of the young, because. They don't need that many. It's like they'll have so many babies and then they'll eat some because they're like, well, that one's not going to survive or we just can't so we can't feed all of them. Um, so this is kind of similar. Um, they also, uh, this is where the females mating with the males try to ensure the male mates with as few individuals as possible. Okay. Um, this creates an interesting, dy interesting dynamic of balance as there is a limited number of males available. And with many females competing for a limited number of males for courtship, this makes it difficult to limit the number of individuals, individuals and males, male mates with. Whereas in many species, the competition is flipped, and that the competition is prominent among the males. This is what you see in a lot of mammals. Um, I think of like you know sheep or you know rams, animals that seem to have a decent population, uh, deer, uh, all the ungulates. It's the males that are fighting. You know they like ram horns and such to get the females or to show off to the females and you know often with birds the males are they'll, they'll sing a song or peacocks they'll perform it's so common for the males to be the courting one but occasionally i'm going to argue in people because of the free martins they're really biological females and here with poisonous dart frogs the females are the ones that need to court the males and really fight off other females great deal of competition um Females will even take the drastic measures and resort to the destroying of other females' eggs. So they're apparently pretty serious competitors. And yeah, it can be a scary world out there. Don't get me wrong. But um, it's just curious that they they kind of mirror what hum humanity or what uh, people have become nowadays. Where, yeah, the females court the males. <laughs> Um, all species of poison dart frogs are neotropical in origin. Wild caught specimens can maintain toxicity for some time. We know about that. Um, scientific uh, study on the lifespan is scant. 
Um, study on the lifespan scan, retagging frequencies indicate it can range from one to three years in the wild. However, these dogs can, these frogs can typically live for much longer than that in captivity, up to 25 years. That's amazing, like nearly a tenfold increase. Uh, these claims also seem to be questionable since many of the larger species take a year or more to mature. Philobates species can take more than two years. They can they, they need high temperatures and so forth. Okay, so then this is apparently the scariest one. This is the Philobates terribilis, this golden dart frog. <laughs> it's become endangered due to habitat destruction. Okay, so is everything. And then they got to throw on their planet. Crap. Despite its small size, this frog is considered to be the most poisoned animal species on the planet. So this is apparently the most poisonous thing out there is this guy. He looks cute. <laughs> and I bet if you touched him, you would feel none that you wouldn't feel anything. I just, I, I don't know for certain. I just, reading these articles, looking at the hand signs, knowing how they make the world seem scarier than it actually is. They lie about great white sharks. They lie about gorillas. They lie about um, scary shit. Dinosaurs. Um, it's, you know, I mean, especially the hyper carnivore, you know, T-Rex, Gigantosaurus, Mosasaurus. It's just all bullshit. So you have people that are taking chickens, which is so obviously the basis of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and then, you know, adding lizard-like qualities, giant fangs, and they just, their giant chimera experimental ideas are all fantasy. It's like Pokemon for, it's a different, it's a different type of Pokemon. It's an older existing Pokemon for, for these freaks. Just make up the creature and, yeah, see how it goes. So the golden poison dart frog is endemic to human forests. Like we said, Colombia, Kawaka, South America, Central America. Um... It's the largest species of the poison dark frog family and can reach a weight of nearly 30 grams, nearly six centimeters uh, long as an adult, about you know two inches um, or so. Pretty big for a little frog. They're brightly colored, while juvenile frogs have mostly black bodies and two golden yellow stripes along their backs. The black phases they matured and around 18 weeks of age, which is one of their favorite numbers. So, you know, it might not, it might just be. Coincidence here, but uh, 18 weeks is just one of their favorite numbers, 6 plus 6 plus 6. The frog is fully colored. The frog's color, color pattern is aposematic. Of course, that's pretty much all you need to know about these guys. It's the essence of the, the studies. They just say it in many different ways. They're aposematic. And then what I'm learning here, and what they're, it seems like their big um, karmic shift our karmic uh, release is oh actually the ones that are you know lesser uh, have less aposematism are actually more poisonous which it seems like nonsense to me uh, again using their planet fake planet uh, deadly alkaloid batrachotoxins in their skin glands um, to become poison the predator must attempt to consume them so that's key is I, I they said touch it like i remember that that was distinctive and they scared the shit out of you as a child like oh don't even touch it like, well apparently, evidently i can look at this guy just walking right up to it pretending that it's this long expedition couldn't find them just right behind a log jump cut watch the video watch the brave wilderness seven minute video i referenced just sir poison dark frogs pick the seven minute seven minute one do it for yourself it's bullshit I, that's just my opinion he's a he's a bullshitter he's a new age David Attenborough. Um, while it's unknown how the frog avoids poisoning itself, other species of poisonous frogs have been demonstrated to express a toxin sponge, protein in blood plasma, internal organ and muscle that binds and sequesters the toxin so as to prevent auto intoxication. Doesn't that seem ridiculous? They're trying to say it, it could theoretically poison itself when it makes no sense. It's, it's part of its being to have toxins inside of it. Um, you don't need to prevent auto intoxic intoxication. That's insane. It's in. Uh, it's ridiculous. This is nonsensical to me. Um, it's only found in three. The bat the batra cotoxus found in only three poisonous frogs from all of Colombia, and they're all in that Philobites genus. And it's also found in birds. That's interesting. In Papuan beetles. And these 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 androgynes, they just get a whole different life. They get to explore this place and they they enslave us to their crap. <laughs> okay, so then um apparently, you know, native tribal 
people who have never seen the internet and all that, which I don't believe exists. I, I think that all this stuff is widely known and they just pretend and have their fake tribes and put on a show. I mean, it's the same thing like the ancient Egypt video I did. They just had make up fake lore and maybe they do have a history of living in tribes and stuff. And maybe some of them live some of that life, but there's no way that they're purely out there hunting all the time when they have, when we have all this plain as day, um, obvious society going on that they can, they can be a part of. So here, <laughs> they're used by native Colombians to poison their blowgun darts so apparently they heat them up like they, they put them near fire and then they release some of their toxins and they take those toxins they put them at the end of their blow darts and apparently the the poison will stay for two years but look what this color look at the orange bright orange that is the color coding it's telling you this is bullshit they don't do this and again a big part of this a big part of this place a big part of what these androgynes do is they want to make you think that everybody's at war all the time we're always a warring species we're just war 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 okay no they they go at war with us and they go at war with us with information and snickering and throwing hand signs and club and hogwarts it's not physical violence they go you know what my partner and i always talk about the military as it's just a bunch of sodomites it's just what they do they just go out and they go camping and they do they get their little gay out they're, you know, they hump their free martins when they're away from their swire at home. They, their swire at home pisses them off. This is how my, this is how people acted when I was growing up. All the free martin dads would just want to bind together, and and then the swire moms were more catty, and it was just insane. Um, but yeah, that's what we have here, orange. So yeah, I just emphasizing the just orange. They they use this is the photo for they're using their toxins to for their blow darts and i think there's a bit of duping delight there i don't know if that's a hand sign but it's just a, it's just nonsense it's nonsense this guy they're like wow look at you know he's putting on a little show for the for the you know idiots Wick, wikipedia right witchypedia wikipedia so then yeah um golden poison dart frogs are a very important frog to the local indigenous cultures such as the embera and kofam people in columbia's rainforest the frog is the main source of the poison and the darts used by the natives to hunt their food. My point is, what I, when I see these, maybe they do live in the rainforest, maybe they do have that, but they have some connection to the rest of Colombia. There's no way they 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 cannot. There's people that walk through these forests that wear normal, like wear like you know khaki outfits and and wander around and, and talk to them, and they, they surely probably have picked up some English as they've gone, and there's they probably trade with other Colombians, and, you know, tell them the people that will make goods for them, and then they'll give them maybe fruit or something. I'm just saying they're not as remote as they want you to think. They want you to think this whole world is, like, is, you know, a great mystery, and it is in some ways, but these masons, this, this 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 society, this orange thirty three thing, it's everywhere. They're like, you can go into these. I guarantee you, you can go into these societies, and this guy looks inverted. Like this, those are some long legs, small torso, no neck, high attached ears. That's not a man. It's just what it is. Um, no hair. Again, this you no hair. Why would you have no hair? Is that a, is that a custom? You just take all your hair off? No, it's because it's not a. Not a man. Probably not taking the hormones. Or maybe he is taking the hormones. And I don't know. It's, I don't know this person. Um, the Embera people carefully expose the frog to the heat of fire. And the frog exudes small amounts of poisonous fluid. Tips of the arrows and darts are soaked in the fluid and remain deadly for two years or longer. So do you believe that? Like, it's up to you. I don't believe it. And even if it, even if it's somewhat true, remotely true, um, I don't, I mean, maybe they're using it to hunt, I guess. But I, I just, I hunt their food, right? Like, maybe. But why would they need the, I, it's just, uh, this part, okay. This part, it, it strikes me as ridiculous because of the, the, the length of time that they suggest. It's just two years. I mean, I guess you could constantly, you know, rehydrate it, rehydrate it, rehydrate it. Um, but then again, like, I, I, Maybe this stuff is acutely toxic to like wild boars and the small animals, but I don't. I, th I think to human humans, it's just we're we're too big in general. Maybe a child, if they were to eat a poison dart frog, it wouldn't go so well for them. 
but what was expressed to me as a child, you touch it with your finger, it's going to kill you. And that's just the farthest thing from the truth. Popular vivarium subject due to its bright color. Yeah, so of course, this is what I was talking about. They're going to put it in captivity. They're going to put it in their glass tank and say, throw their devil horns and say, oh, this is, don't even touch it. It's poisonous. People had to handle it with their gloves. Or, do, 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 do. Make it all scary. You know, make it all, oh, I'm such a wild person for even keeping one of these things. And I'm, you know, I'm so interesting for knowing all about them and, and sharing my bullshit with you and keeping you down, you normal human. Uh, despite its dangerous toxicity in the wild, captive specimens raised without their natural food sources are non-toxic. I do, one of these masons is going to tell you they're toxic. They're not going to expect you to read and do your own research, do your own studying. Uh, due, their, due to their small range in the wild, poaching for the pet trade formerly represented a serious threat to the survival of the species. Frog breeders is just evil. Uh, Tesseros, Columbia, captive bred frogs are now widely available for the pet. This is just disgusting. This is baffo tranny nonsense. People would not do this, and if they do, they're highly subverted. To, to treat animals like this, get money off of selling them and raise, it's just fucked up. And this is, I've talked about it before in Pokemon, it's just evil. It's evil to do this. And I think about people that, uh, you know, breed dogs and then get purebred dogs. It's just, you're you're buying, some, you're getting a dog that can't do anything for itself. It's been purebred, it doesn't know how to do anything. And yeah, they're going to have more complications. And you're, it's just a harmful practice to, to, to support. You should go out and save something, rescue something. Yeah, you know, you don't, if you're going to do that, I, it, it is, it is messed up. I mean, I don't know if we should have animals or not. I have an animal, like he's my buddy, but I don't know. He might, he might be ha happier out in nature. He probably would be. But the way the world works with cars and all these asphalt roads, I think, you know, he has a better life than he would out there. So it's complicated. But we didn't, we rescued him. We didn't go to some, we couldn't afford that either. And all these things cost ridiculous amounts of money. My mom has bought this stuff in the past. Mom, say that loosely. Um, $600, $700 for some bread animal. It's insane. Um... Are these specimens are legal, non-toxic, healthier, and less expensive when compared to poached animals. The demand for illegally obtained wild-caught specimens has decreased. Well, yeah, okay. So you don't want to have the poisonous ones. You just want the, the you just want the coloration and the, the red ones. Then you want to go lie to your friends about how poisonous they are. It's just so obvious. Like it's so obvious how these people work. Um, okay. So then at the end of this, yeah, the faith aspect. They will pick up snakes with their hands, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not harm them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will be made well. Yes, I believe if you have faith in in God, that these, it, again, some people will, will you'll see this part of the video and be like, how I was in the past with science, where, oh, yes, you know, anybody who's, like, faith-based is, like, completely delusional. There's no, there's nothing to, to, Nothing to back it up. And I think there's a lot to back it up, especially when you have all these hand signs going on, all this lying going on. So I am faith-based. I, I, I used to have way more reverence for science. I still read about science a lot, but yeah, they'll throw in their evolution. They'll throw in their planet. They'll throw in stuff that just is, it doesn't relate. And it has, it's, it's, it's just such a obvious derailing from their genuine science. I'm reading a book on insects right now. And by, by Robert Snodgrass, I'm going to share info about that. He's made some very curious statements in that book that I'm going to share. Um, he, I say again that loosely. And yeah, he talks about evolution and planet where it just doesn't, doesn't need to be said. You can say Earth. You can say they just love pushing their crap. They, they give you interesting tidbits about these creatures and these animals. But then... They have to throw in the nonsense Darwinian evils of it. And they often will like create Darwinian style worlds in their video games too. So just they, they want people to be in these in these trapped mind states as much as they can. And video games very much are um, Skinner's boxes, like these evil little traps where they spread out the target further and further in a in the land of like Darwinian everything's fighting for each fighting each other constantly. When you look out in nature and there's like birds calmly chirping, then yeah, maybe they go for a worm, but it's not as aggressive as they make it out to be. 
and even humans out here, like, we're not like kidding me. The average free Martin who, who drinks, you know, milk and cow's milk, mammary fluid from another animal past their babyhood, insane, and, you know, eats their steak. It's like they're not out running around, like, hunting all the time. No, they just go to the grocery store and get the little bit they need and go home, usually. That's probably the average person. Um, and it's, it's gross to me, but in the Bible, apparently, it says uh, as long as there's no blood in it, I just disagree with that. I say, why bother? Don't don't eat animals. Don't eat flesh. It just doesn't make sense. It's dead. Um, I want to eat things that are alive, like plants that give me nutrients. And I don't want to have to go through a second medium. But that's not what this video is about. That's just a little tidbit at the end. Poison dart frogs do not seem as deadly. In fact, I'm pretty certain they're not as deadly as they tell you about. They, they, they karmically admit to it. <laughs> and after they lie about it when you go to their exhibits and tell you you can't touch them. It's like, well, they're not on an alkaloid, alkaloid diet and they're captive, therefore they're not poisonous, so stop lying to me. These people lie about everything. Uh, they're in your family. They're all around you. And we've got to right, walk the, the narrow path because they're on the broad way to destruction, which is going along with their TV oracle and all the lies that come with it. So we got to walk this path and... I will make a video with you guys soon. So look forward to hearing about what you guys think about poison dart frogs, what you guys think about brave wilderness, what you guys think about all the orange coating, his devil horns. If you watch that video, those are the only times he throws devil horns is when he's talking about the apostomatism holding the frog. Let me know what you think. Uh, ultimately, I believe this here, that if a snake were to bite me, you know what I would do? I would... Go to the bite, suck the toxins out of the wound, spit them out. Keep doing that, spit it out, spit it out. Just not even make a big deal of it. Be as calm as possible. And then if I saw, you know, my blood coagulate, if I felt my blood coagulating and everything stiffening up and, okay, yeah, of course I would go to the hospital. However, the entire time I'm going through this, I would have faith that Jesus Christ is going to protect me, that I'm going to be okay, and that Maybe this is indeed true. Maybe I wouldn't be harmed at all because my faith is so great. I, it's, it's a cool thing to think about. And I hope to in, increase my faith every day. And I, my faith is being increased every day. There's just too many signs, too many, too many things that are evident about our reality that show that God is real. And they've put us in this phony baloney world where they want us in a box and we refuse to be in it. So get out of the box, get out of the birdcage and explore this world to the fullest because it's not as scary as you make it out to be and if a mason you know androgyne character comes up to you and says this type of stuff they, oh it's so scary blah 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 nature blah 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 we had this, this to end on this this is a good story to end on we had this witchy looking neighbor uh, when we were at the apartment we were at last time uh, back in connecticut and this lady Whenever I saw her, would say she had a black bear. She would see she saw a black bear, and she was scared for her dog's life. And if you are around black bears, you know they are the most mild mannered. They do not want. They do not care. They're relaxed. They're going after like trash cans and fruit and maybe fish if they find them. If they're lucky, they are not. They're they are walking away from humans. They're not. They're nowhere near a threat of humans. I was in pitch black night and I came up behind a seven foot tall black bear. Okay. I'm on my bike and all I did, I didn't even, I didn't even fret was just squeak my brakes a couple times to let him know I was there. And he was like, Oh, and then he wandered off into the woods. It was nothing. It was nothing. And I was calm and it didn't affect me at all. I have videos on my phone. I can share with you with how calm black bears are. Um, but yeah, the general idea is nature is not as scary as they make it. And if you have true faith, there's a very good chance that this poison is not going to affect you in the way that it would them. Um, if you're a liar, evil, deceptive, uh, atheist slash Baphomet worshiping person, I think poison is going to hurt you a little bit more. I think if you got bit by a snake, it's going to hurt you more than somebody who loves Jesus Christ. That's just my opinion, but I feel it's true. So praise, praise Jesus Christ. And... Know that poison dart frogs aren't that poisonous.